I'm Marita. Um, I'm from West Africa and Liberia. And I have two kids, which is Kenan and Lois. God brought me to the United States and God healed me. And that's why I love the caregiving. And when I came, I chose to do the CNA and now I'm a caregiver and I work to so other places like dementia care, senior living, you know, all those places I try to work and see what it means. And now I'm with developmental disability people and I love it because, you know, I've been in a driver's seat and I know what it means. So I love to give care and I love gardening and I love to talk to people. You know, I just, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I'm a testimony and God work in my life so many ways. I pray to God before coming into this country. I ask God that I want to change my family life because we're so poor. In Africa, when you're so poor, you know, they may mockery all of you and they think it's because you are cursed or you witchcraft, that's why you're so poor. And I just wanted to change the family life. And so I pray to God and God brought me into the United States. That's a, another long story. You know what I wanted God to do. First, I was sick and disabled, not able to even feed myself, not able to do any daily activities for myself, my mom stood by me grandma taught me how to really keep the fit you know no matter how it look like it's not seem to work but just pray keep praying and you know and have the faith that god will do it for you and so grandma was a witchcraft um how you call it she was ready saving the devil she was a zoo and for each time she gave birth, the devil would take away her child because she have dedicated herself to the devil. So, she, you know, to pay back that, you know, her kids were going. So she met the man of God at the hospital when she had my uncle, when she just delivered. And the man of God went to her and said, if you, if you accept God as your Lord and Savior, your child going to live. And she said, yes, I'm willing to. And she accepted God as her Lord and Savior, and she started worshiping God. And the people in the village did not like the idea why she's serving God. So they arrested her and put her somewhere where she, will even, she won't see the daylight, and they plan to kill her. They plan where, you know, at the entrance of the town, they have initiated everything for her death, and then the news went to the town chief in the city, the city mayor. Somebody told the city mayor tonight, they, you know, they arrested a Christian. She been with them for some months now, you know, so they're trying to kill her tonight. The city mayor sent a message in the village and said, the lady you guys arrested, I want her back in the city now, tonight. So they escorted my grandma and that's how my grandma was able to escape from the village and she did not go to the village anymore. She was an evangelist. She would take me to the hospital. We pray for the sick. She fasted and prayed. And so I learned how to fast and pray, even though sometimes I used to cheat on her. <laughs> I wasn't strong enough, but yes, I did it. And you know, she prayed a lot and she taught me a warfare prayer. She said on certain cases, you know, you need certain prayer, like you can sit and pray and say, oh God, you help me. And certain cases, you need to go back and forth, you know, declaring the blood of Jesus and rebuking every satanic plan. Go on the front with your arm and ammunition. And I didn't understand why grandma me go with your arm and ammunition. So I said, grandma, what do you mean? I wrote PG and all the stuff. I'm like, I don't have any of those. She said, no. In some cases, you need God to act now. And that's when you need that and cry and really cry to God because you depend on him to do it. She said, for instance, you don't have food on your table and you go to the hospital, they diagnose you. She said, so what are you going to do? Repeat the devil right there and say, devil, you are a liar and keep praying. And so grandma taught me now and I live within me and I'm still doing it and it worked for me. And so... That's how I got to know God. And even when I keep coming to this country, I played a lottery. 
and I'm depend on God because I wanted God to change my situation. And that is so difficult for people to win to win a lottery, like a, a visa, you know, thing like the varsity visa thing. Mm -hmm. You get you go to the website, you got all your information, and then you fax it, and then the machine get to assign a number to your name and put it in a box, and then the machine gonna click on whatever names it chose. And then they will write you and say, oh, congratulations, you have been selected to get a visa and you need this, you need to do this. Even to process the document, I did not have the money, but God stood by me. And, you know, I had a dream. God took me from the dark and I saw the light and I knew I was going to travel. And then so one time I went to my mom, she was crying because there was no food. My siblings were all hungry. They wasn't in school. And, you know, God helped me. I told my mom, I'm like, Mom, don't cry. Just pray. I'm going to travel. And she wept her tears. And she started praying along with me. And when the, you know, when the, when the result was up, my friend told me, oh, the result up. And I asked her, I'm like, what result? She said, oh, the visa. The visa program, the results are up. So I was like, oh. And I didn't tell her I did play, but I was so, you know, like anxious to see what's happening. So I went to the post office, the names were there. But before claiming the step, I saw my first name and I just couldn't believe that I was dreaming. And I saw my full name. I just started rejoicing. I did not even stop for car or, or you know, get a transport to go home. And I just started running. Like, just, I was so excited. And I went home. When I went home, I told my mom, I'm like, okay, just keep praying. But the devil is a liar. And there was some, you know, cases where things were really rough. But grandma told me when, when I mean, she said, nothing good come easily. The devil will try to fight, but just be strong. So that I remember and I kept praying and I kept, you know, holding on, like grandma said. And I went to the church and I said, God, I want to be healed. Second, I said, I want to travel. It doesn't matter where, I just want to change my family life. And then the third one, I want to be favored. I want your blessing upon me wherever I go. And God actually did everything for me. And I thank God because when I look back and see where God took me from, and I appreciate him more. So my family life, it's not the best, but they have food on their table. My mom is well taken care of. And, you know, I'm just the happy one. When Lois was born, I took her to the doctor, her doctor, and her doctor said, Oh, I hope what I'm thinking is not what it is. And when she said it, I said, okay. And so she said, oh, I need you to take Lois to Tacoma. And then we're going to check her heart and see because what I'm thinking, I hope it's not it. I started praying. I said, God, here you are. I don't know what she think or how you're going to do this. I depend on you to take control. Tomorrow, I'm going to take Lois. You be the doctor. You intervene. You check Lois and you do everything for me. Hmm. And so the next day, I took Lois there. And the doctor did all his examination and he came and he stood and he looked at me. He said, go home. And I look at him. He said, don't bring this child here anymore. And I just kind of look at him like, what he mean by this? And he said, they can have no problem. She's okay. And I said, oh, God, have done it again. Thanks be to God. So those are the ways God have really worked in my life and whatever I pray for. He either tell me to wait or he gives to me right away. And so I'm grateful for everything God has done for me and is still doing for me. And I pray that God will give me the strength and so that to serve him in a, in a way in which he wants me to be used.